So in this problem, what we've got is a wheel uh, that rotates clockwise, and there's a connecting rod that is, uh, joins points A and P. And the point P, this piston, it's constrained to move only in the horizontal direction. And this connecting shaft is 25 centimeters long, so a linkage with length of 25 centimeters. The link, the link is pinned to the wheel, and the distance between A and G, the radius of the wheel, is 5 centimeters. And the wheel accelerates clockwise from rest at a constant angular acceleration of 15 degrees per second squared. At time zero, or initially, point A is directly above the center of the wheel. So at time zero, point A would be located right here and there would be that the 25 centimeter linkage would extend from point A uh, at time zero to some uh, position up here. What we're being asked to find is the velocity of the piston after two seconds or two seconds after the wheel has started spinning. In this problem I haven't drawn it yet but one thing we know is that the position of point G is the same value of Y as point P and I'll draw a dashed line to indicate that. One thing that makes dynamics problems uh, so challenging is it's hard to visualize on paper what's going on at a point in time later on. So let's say some time uh, uh, some time goes on and point A moves down to this location. Let's figure out where point P would be located. There's, there's a lot going on. We've got the wheel is rotating clockwise but linkage AP is actually rotating counterclockwise and the distance that or the the initial velocity of the point here at point A in the X direction is actually less than the horizontal velocity of the piston and that's because of the rotation of this linkage in the counterclockwise direction so we need to account for both the translational change in position at point A and its rotational component so first thing let's figure out the um, what's going on at, at two seconds let's figure out the positions the value of theta and it's a constant acceleration so we can say theta is equal to one half times the acceleration which is 15 degrees per second squared times two seconds squared and what that means is that theta in this uh, after two seconds has elapsed theta is equal to 30 degrees and omega Omega A G will say rotating the wheel rotating is rotating uh, acceleration again 15 degrees per second squared times two seconds is equal to a rotational speed of 30 degrees per second or we could say 0 0.52 radians per second. We'll have to be careful with the signs here because the wheel is rotating in the clockwise direction and we defined if we define with a right hand axis a positive rotation will be in the negative direction so we'll have to account for this the fact that omega a g uh, we're calling positive is clockwise. When I see these problems the first thing I do is try to figure out what I know at the outset and I can quickly deduce the velocity of of point A at the outset, I can say the velocity of A using the relative velocity equation is equal to the velocity at point G plus the velocity of A with respect to G. The velocity at point G is not moving, it's just an axle that's stationary in space. The velocity of G is equal to zero, and the velocity of A with respect to G is equal to the rotational speed omega A G crossed with the position of A with respect to G. And what I mean by that, the position of A with respect to G is this vector right here. And we'll need to figure out the x and the y components of this vector. So if I write it out, the position of A with respect to G is equal to, let's call this a constant, just RAG, which is the 5 centimeters it's given to us, RAG times the sine of theta in the x or the i hat direction, uh, plus RAG cosine theta in the j hat direction. So let me write this out, and I'll have to be careful with the signs now. I'm going to say there's some scalar omega AG, the negative omega AG in the k hat direction, crossed with the position of A with respect to G, and I've made that substitution right here. So let's do the cross product. Let's first do uh, k K hat crossed with the J hat direction. If I look at this, if I go uh, from the K hat to the J hat direction, the right hand rule, what I'm going to get is a negative sign between those two. So I've got to remember to take that into account. So what I'll have is negative, negative omega AG, which will be positive omega AG times RAG cosine theta in the I hat direction. And now if I cross K hat with I hat, I'll have a positive j hat direction, so I don't need to switch the sign, so let's keep it a negative sign, minus omega a g, r a g, sine theta in j hat direction. And so here I've cleaned up my work a little bit, but here is the velocity of a with respect to theta and omega a g. So now that I know the velocity of a, I can calculate the velocity of p, which is equal to the velocity of a, again my relative velocity equation, plus the velocity 
of p with respect to a. And this can be written va plus omega p a, or omega a p, doesn't matter how we write it, crossed with the position of p now with respect to a. So at the moment, we don't know what this omega a p is going to be, but we do know that it would have to be counterclockwise because it, again, at a, a point in time, uh, after a point in time has transpired, the rod will have this sort of uh, slope. So we're going to have to somehow figure out what omega a p is, and we need to figure out what is the position of p with respect to a. We can do the position of p with respect to a pretty straightforward. We've got, let's say it's a, we've got a right triangle here. And let's say these two lengths, we'll say this is, uh, we'll give it two constants, r, here's r p a in the x direction, and r p a in the y direction. So let's say the position of p now with respect to a is equal to r p a x plus r p a y in the j hat direction. And with a little bit of trigonometry, Pythagorean's theorem, I can say r p a x is equal to l squared minus r a g squared cosine squared theta to the one half. And r p a y is simply equal to r a g cosine theta. So cleaning it up again, again my relative velocity equation, and if I scroll down a little bit, the velocity of a plus the cross product of omega a p with the position of p with respect to a, here I've substituted in, and I, we can now evaluate it. So let's cross the k hat and the j hat direction. Again, if I do that, I'm going to have a value in the negative i hat direction. And if I cross these two vectors, I'll get omega a p r p a y in the i hat direction plus omega a p r p a x in the j hat direction. So let's combine everything. Here is, so my velocity of p will be, I'm going to add v a in there. Here's my cross product. I'll throw this into that term. And what I come up with when I combine everything is this expression. And when I look at this combined expression, what it's saying is that velocity of p could have a component in the j hat direction. But what we know, we know that can't be true. And we set up an, a constraint, there can be no velocity in the j hat direction. So we'll say the velocity of p in vector form is equal to, we'll just say, some scalar v p x in the i hat direction plus zero in the j hat direction. And this is a constraint. It can only move horizontally. So what I'm going to do is examine the i hat and j hat terms. Let's start with the i hat terms. So I'll equate these two. On the i hat terms, the left hand side, I've got vpx is equal, the first i hat term is this omega a g r a g cosine theta plus omega a p r p a y. So here it is written out. And if I do the same thing for the j hat terms, what I've done, I've forced j hat to equal 0. So the sum of these two terms has got to equal 0. What I'm left with are two equations, two unknowns. The first unknown, what we want to find, and the second unknown is the rate at which that linkage rotates. So let me solve for omega a p first off. So I've got omega a p is equal to w a g r a g over r a p x sine theta. And if I make the substitution here, what I come up with is this expression. And I'll let you work through the double check my algebra, but if I plug in or substitute RPAY and RPAX, I come up with this expression, and I know all of the variables for this expression, and I can solve for VPX. And if I substitute numbers, what I'll come up with for VPX is 2.5 centimeters per second. And finally, in vector form, the solution uh, only in the x direction, two and a half centimeters per second. Now, what's interesting is that the velocity of p, as I said at the beginning, was ought to be greater than the velocity of a in the horizontal direction. Here, I've got two and a half centimeters per second. If I scroll back up to the original formula, I plugged in some numbers for v a x. Here's the original formula for the velocity of a. Here's the velocity of a in the x direction. So I would expect that the velocity of p, the pis uh, piston moving to the right, ought to be greater than the velocity of a itself because this linkage is rotating counterclockwise. And indeed, if I substitute, uh, if I calculate vax, what I come up with is 2.25 centimeters per second. And indeed, the piston uh, moving to the right at two and a half centimeters per second is bigger than the velocity of A in the x direction.